Hi guys, it's another lovely day to have a chat with a friend, a brother, and uh, an army who's always willing to serve the nation. Uh, the sacrifice is the best way to lead, and when you see people who are willing to sacrifice their time, their moments, their joy, their holidays, just to make sure that the banner of the country is lifted forward, you celebrate their day. My name is Idafi Matthew Esogene. I have as my guest on the show today on this very lovely newspaper seat, John Uguchuku Ogu. I call him Man Mountain. I call him uh, the reliable and dependable one. Nigerians might not appreciate him that much, but if you go to Israel from the airport to every city you go, if you say you are the brother of Man Mountain, uh, Uguchuku Ogu, John Ogu, you, I mean, free cab, free Uber, free hotel accommodation, free food. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And, um, I'm going well, uh, first off, uh, John Ogu, do you get this feeling like the coaches that coach the national team, that coach in the national team, don't watch the Israeli league? Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me here. Um, and thank you for all the uh, compliments you gave me and all that. Yeah, great guy. Um, yeah, um, I don't, I don't think the manager don't, don't watch Israeli league or so, or the scouts or everyone there. But, um, uh, it's just something that I feel like people back home don't watch. You know, I don't think it's the manager. manager has so a So this is, this is my reason of asking that yeah. question. I do not understand how I will have a Jonogu reliable defensive midfielder who also can play very well in central defense who also can push the team and give us goals long range goals i, I don't think since on release we had a scoring midfielder from the, the from deep the deep line midfielder and then i will bring in an attacking player organic table i know organic table from Warren before i came to lagos and then went to europe he's an attacker he's a eight like the daniel amokashi position i'm playing in defensive midfield not because jonobu is injured or other players are injured but you just put Jonogu on the bed. So sometimes I feel like, okay, this guy did not watch Jonogu. He just brought in Jonogu because maybe his size is a giant and is afraid to play. Do you get that feeling? Well, I don't, I don't think I get that feeling, you know, but um, sometimes I feel like, you know, um, if I'm not on the pitch, you know, playing, um, and I feel very, very, very sad. But, you know, Super Eagles is a, is a, is a family team, you yeah. know, and um, everyone in the team has respect for each other. Um, Etebo is a great player, and Didi is a great player. Yeah. Um, our captain, obviously, is a, is, a, is a fantastic player. But, um, you know, Etebo can give you option in the midfield. So if you're a manager, you, you, you wouldn't want to play Etebo as an offensive midfielder or think I need to play him as an offensive midfielder or as a defensive midfielder. You can just easily play him in both positions yes. because he's good. Etebo is a good ball player. He's a, good, he's a fighter. He's, he's small. He's a fighter, he's, he's fast, he knows how to read the game. So I don't think um, the problem is uh, more like um, a table. I think we have too many good players with different qualities in the team. You know? Like, for example, we have a, 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 um, an Alessi who can play from the side. You know, yeah, where we can play, play, play as number 10. Sure, you understand? Yeah. So when you have people like this and um, Didi, who you know, in, in Premiership is the best, the best, best tackler. The best, you know? the tackler so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's just like, um, I wouldn't say I'm just... Um, um, uh, unfortunate. I'm not going to say this. I just feel like everyone has their quality to bring in the team, and they're young as well, you know. So I feel maybe the manager, you know, believe in um, young young players, young players you know, because I'm I know like um so many managers out there, you know, kind of players with age bracket that they like, you know. So maybe because they are young, they are they are you know they are they are strong and they know how to play as well. So I feel like the manager just want to stick with them, you know. But um. I'm I'm proud, you know, to wear the national team jersey. You know. I'm proud to, you know, to represent my country from from the first day to to the last game against them, Tunisia. Um, I'm always, you know, happy to be among these guys. But um, you know, in reality, you just have to, you know, take things as you know as it comes to you and and, and keep working at. Yeah, I saw you playing basketball on Instagram, yeah. and I remember I interviewed you before, and I said to you, Jonogu, looking at your size, your beauty, your I mean, your palm is like, one of your palms is like two of mine. Yeah. <laughs> you could hold my head and squeeze it, actually. And I ask you this question: Do you sometimes think that you made the wrong choice choosing football instead of basketball because you kind of like really do the hoops very well? Never, <laughs> never. I'm not regretting you know, choosing to you know to play football. Football has been my life, you know, from when I was very young to today. Um, football has taken me has taken me to places 
Football has given me a lot. I've met a lot of great people through football. So um, football has always been what I wanted to do, you know, when I was very young. On the streets, Lagos when I was growing, tough, without no shoes and all that, you know. But um, um, basketball is just something that I watch. And I was lucky to... It? Yeah, I enjoy it. And I was lucky to, you know, to, to play in Israel where Israeli basketball league yeah, is Yeah, very, very good Yeah, one. and then there's so many of my friends who are Americans, you know, who... I met in Israel, you know, so sometimes they just invite me to go watch that game. So I find it very interesting. And, um, you know, I just feel like I, I can play basketball, you know, but... You, you should play basketball. But it's just, it's not something, that's not my line, you know. I, I could just want to show this, but I don't know the rules. The um, rudiments of it. Yeah, and everything, so yeah. So let's come back to club football now. Uh, your contract with uh, Apple Bersheva ended. It was a great ceremony. I saw one long testimonial from a fan. Yeah. I read it and I had ghost bump all over me. Like if a fan, it was practically worshiping you as an yeah. idol. And 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 I asked myself, why is John not continuing with this club? They love you. Um, they are mad about you. Like they they, they love you the way Roma fans love Toti. I put the Shiva fans are, I mean, they are real. You know, they are, they are people I love. They are people I'll never forget in my life, you know. Um, you know, every day I think about the, the, um, the last game, the way they celebrated me. Oh, my God. You know, I didn't, at first, I didn't know it was going to be in that way. I just felt like it's going to be emotional for me, no doubt. But um, with the way they celebrated me, you know, it made, it made me proud, you know. I was proud of myself. Yeah, um, I mean, I, was, I moved to Israel, you know, five years ago, you know. Um, to be honest with you, Israel was not the destination for me. It was like the first time I got to Israel when after I went to play um, a UEFA Cup game with uh, my team from Portugal. You know, yeah. I said I can't come and play in this country. But I feel like everything I said that it was just you know was just wrong. God decided yeah. to, to so God, show you yeah, that exactly, charge. Exactly. So when, the I, boss. so when I moved to the country, you know, it was just like um, a stepping stone, you know, to you know to come back again. And then when I got to the team where the fans showed me love from. From the first day they saw me, after like 20 minutes, you know, they, they started chanting my name you know, in the stadium. And this is where I believe um, I'm, I'm at home. You know. All I needed to do was just you know, to give my best for the fans, give my best in every game. Even though when I don't give uh, my best, you know, I always come out and apologize to them and tell them I'll do, I'll do well in the next game and I promise them. You know, so. Yeah, I say that thing you do a lot. And, and not too many african players i'm not talking about survivors players now. not too many african players do that after a game when most times when you guys lose you come out and you publicly take responsibility yeah i feel like a lot, a lot and you apologize yeah to your fans. A lot. is it like the club management ask you to do no that? nobody asked me to do that they know me my, they know me they know me in, um, in Brescia, you know like I, I speak my mind you know they, people might hate me for that you know but i speak my mind i just tell them straight and i speak from the hearts i don't speak you know to you know, your face, eye, and then behind you, I speak. But I just speak from the heart, you know. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of players don't do this because because of the cost and the, the death threats or threats they get from fans. For me, it's not a problem, you know. I do that because I want to. I feel like I didn't do enough. And maybe people get angry that people still insult me, but the next day I go back to work because you know, I always believe with hard work, you can always be better. You know? So I go back to work. I try to improve myself, watch my mistakes, and watch everything that I did wrong, how to improve myself, compare myself to, to the guys in the top league, you know, like, you know, see what they, how they play and, yeah. you know, compare that to how I play. And I feel like if I'm, if I'm doing more, I'll be proud. If I feel like he's doing something right, I try to learn from this. So for me, it's all about, you know, like working out, learning and, and, and believing. Yeah. In yourself, you know, so. Okay, let me go to social media. On Twitter, uh, they want get precious ask. He said, he said, please, what club are you going to sign for, bro? Um, the club. Because there's plenty of rumor. You're going yeah. to talk, you're going to be I mean, yeah, you're going to you know, stay. As a free player now, a 31 that's, that's year old guy, as a free player now, you know, sometimes it's always difficult, you know, to just, you know, quickly make that move, you know. But um, it's something that I just want to take my time. My agent is working, agents are working. Um, if you ask me, you know, I just want to, I just want to leave this country like now, you know, go start playing, you know. But um, if it's not happening now, I just have to wait. You know. But when the time comes, you know, whichever club that I'll be going to, I'll, I'll put it out there to the fans, you know, to, to you know. But right now, I'm still just like, you know, staying calm, you know, watching over my mom that is, you know, back home sick, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. Like so this is what I'm looking at now. Nigerian Football 360 said, if you could make just one change to Nigerian locally, what would it be? 
the change. Yeah. Uh, fuck, like, uh, that's a bit, <laughs> that's a bit, that's a bit too, like two, if you okay. ask me, two. two. First so what are the two changes you make? Um, the, the pitch, the pitches. Terrible. Yeah, the pitches, and then the security um, part. You know, yeah, it's really, it's really, really bad, you know. In Europe, in Israel. Israel is one of the country that we from outside see as the most unsafe place. But then having conversation with you back and front and also Tony Wakeme helped me to understand that Israel is the safest yeah, place on the safe. planet. The country is really safe. Now, the security arrangement, pre-match arrangement, how does it work in in Europe? I'll take I'll, I'll use I'll use Israel. Yes, Israel. That's where I live for five years, you know. Um, before a game, you know, like um two hours before a game. Yeah. You see like almost 50, 60, uh, 50 police securities, you know, all over, around the stadium. Yeah. They start how they plan, where to stay, how to stay, and they don't, they don't, they don't joke with this, you know. And I think we need to do better in our country. You know? We need to learn from these, these people. You know, that's why we travel out. You know? That's why we live abroad. You know, we, we need to, we go there to live and try to learn from them. You know, um, security wise in, in Israel is is is, is top notch. You know? and and they say Israel uh, racism is not rampant in Israel like it is in other parts of Europe. How true is that? Yeah, um, I've I use myself as an example. I've been there for five years and I've never seen that that in Israel. No one has ever you know, mocked me use, using that monkey thing. You know? Yeah, I've never I've never felt it. You know, I played against opponent, their fans, they are they are tough. You know, they they, they can't sing bad things. Yeah, like they're crazy. It's yeah. Not but they can't use that uh, monkey chance on me, you know. But um, I just feel like, you know, this thing needs to stop, but it can't stop. But we just have to learn, move on from this. Okay, and whoever, whoever chance on the player with that monkey, they should, they, should, they should ban them. That's just what I feel. If a club and their fans, they ban them, take them to third division. If they get back to first, they will never do that again. I agree with you on that. Now, let, let's talk about uh, dressing room. I, like, I always like talking about dressing room. The Sofa Eagles dressing room, Apple Bachelor dressing room. Can you compare and contrast? It the is the atmosphere? same. It is the same. Why I say it's the same though, is um, first of all, as a football player, if you're in a team, it's a family team. Yeah. And um, if two, three, four are not happy with the rest, then there's a problem. You know? And in Super Eagles, everyone is happy to be together, Nigerian brothers and everything. We're like big family in Super Eagles. In our probation, it's the same. Um, I don't have a problem with anybody. I'm open to everybody. Everybody is my friend. Um, in Super Eagles, we are friends to each other. We can call each other anytime. We have a group chat. We make fun of each other. We follow ourselves. We support ourselves. You know, even outside Super Eagles. You know. So, um, you know, it's it's more like a family thing. You know, and that's why you see everybody when we're playing. The ones that are not playing are always happy. Yeah, not, notice that. They are not happy because. Um, we are satisfied not playing. We are happy because the ones playing are doing, uh, doing well, and then they also they show us they show us love and respect. So this there, is there, there is something we noticed in Egypt that has never happened with the national team before: uh, the Kano one call effect. You guys were always singing. Whether yeah, you call yeah, like Kano, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it was a, this was a Kano, regular yeah, chant in yeah, the dressing yeah, room. Yeah. Kano was also uh, a, a side attraction in yeah, the stadium. Yeah. Talk to us about the Kano. Yeah, I mean, when we see anytime we, we see Kano, you know, it gives us that extra motivation. This is a legend, someone who has won it all, someone who has um, you know, played in to top clubs level. to the highest level, and then with with what he went through, he still bounced back, keep kept playing and all that, you know. So whenever we see him before every game, he comes to our training, comes to motivate us. So every time we play after game, you know, we just try to play that song, you know. And when he gets to that part where they, <laughs> they talk about Kano, you know, that's yeah, like the just, best for us. Just you know. show up in the so yeah, Kano is um Kano Kano play a big part, you know, for us to to at least achieve this um bronze Brons, medal, yeah, because it wasn't really easy. We wanted the gold, but it didn't happen. But yeah, it was obvious. Uh, what are the positives and negatives of playing football? The the plus and minus, you know, there are ups and downs. So for you, yeah, the, pos the positive I think is um when you are on the pitch, you know. You just have to be on the pitch. If you're playing regularly, you always you you, you always be happy. If you um, if you're healthy, you always be happy. Um, if you if you if you're doing well, it's an extra it's a, it's an extra um, plus for you. But you know the negative things you need is um, if you're injured. Injury is one of the one thing every no player yeah wants to you know to to have. And then maybe um. 
when you're looking for a new team, like yeah, I'm, like I'm, like I'm waiting now, you know. Yeah, it will come. It will yeah, come. I, I believe in God. I believe it will come. And I just, I, I, I still, I feel like I'm, I'm at my, at my, my peak now. I believe in myself. I know what I can do. I, I'm healthy. I just, you know, feel like, you know, when the, the right club comes, I will really would love to, you know, grab that, you know, whichever one that comes. I just want to play football. That's that's what I want.